Today we're gonna do something a bit different. We are not gonna talk about our uh, the Diablo campaign we're building at the moment, but instead we're gonna do something else because while researching the material for this channel, I had the time to go through the forums and Facebook groups and stuff, and I noticed that in relation to Savage Worlds, one thing came up multiple times, and that was um, players, but mainly game masters, um, having one specific problem. The perceived problem is that Savage Worlds seems to be too random. And today we're gonna talk about this a bit because I think I can give you some advice on how to handle that. So let's break it down. Um, the problem actually wasn't formulated as such, it was um, more specific. The game master in question said that he has trouble building encounters because they are either too hard for his player characters or too easy. And since the roles can go widely different uh, in Savage Worlds, um, you might uh, agree with that, because it's really hard. If your guy hits the uh, other player for massive amounts of damage, uh, the encounter can be really, really troublesome. On the other hand, if the player character hits your big bad evil guy for massive amount of damage, well, the encounter is over and didn't really do much. Both of those might be a problem, uh, but let's let's take a step back and break it down. Why is this a problem in Savage Worlds? Well, it is a problem because the dice explode. If you roll a six on a six-sided die, you roll it again and you add the two numbers up, and that way, even a lowly dice six can potentially roll a twenty-six. That might be a problem. On the other hand. It is much less of a problem than you might think, because um, if you look at it and you look at skills and trade roles, so you run walls, uh, your, your character wants to climb up a wall and you roll climbing. If you roll a 30 on that roll, that's not too much of a problem. Your character scaled that wall pretty well. It didn't break an encounter. It just, it worked. That was cool. And you can narrate it pretty well. It says something about your character, may even give you some uh, cues for character development later on. But uh, that doesn't seem to be a problem then, uh, exploding skill dice. Um, trade roles, agility, stuff like that, also not too much of a problem. What is a problem then? Well, if you look at damage roles, there might be a problem there. Because a damage roll in Savage World might lead to your character being shaken, or a big bad evil guy being shaken, same thing, um, or it might result in one or multiple wounds, which might take a character out of the game, and it might do so on the first round, because it rolled really, really high, or it might do nothing at all, and that variation it might be troublesome for game masters to get their head around. But talking about this, it's important to distinguish two things. There's damage rolls against player characters and there's damage rolls by player, player characters. And we're going to talk about them separately now. About this in two pieces. Damage done to players. If there's much damage done to a player character, you need to keep a few things in mind. One, players can take wounds. It's not the end of the world if a character takes a wound or two. He'll still be in the game. Two, player characters can soak. They are wild cards. If they have bennies left, it's unlikely that they take many wounds all at once because a player character, since he's a wild card, has a pretty good chance of making a soak roll. So if they, um, even if they take like three wounds from one attack, they will probably be able to soak one, which means they are at two wounds that's still in the game. Third thing, if they go down, the party can help them. There are usually multiple player characters in an encounter, and that means that even if one of them goes down, the rest of them can help the guy who's down, the encounter will go on. It might mean that the encounter has a different ending, like uh, an encounter they might otherwise have easily 
uh, overcome might be difficult enough so that they must retreat. But, well, that's the way of the game. That's why we have dice in the first place. If we knew how an, character, uh, uh, how an encounter would pan out, we wouldn't need to play in the first place. Um, there is, however, in Savage Worlds, the thing that there is permanent injury. So your character can lose limbs, essentially. And um, that might wreak havoc with uh, certain character concepts. For example, I had a player character, uh, one of my characters was designed as an elf, and he had two swords, and he had a bow. And I was pretty confident in his abilities. Then, first session, he takes like an arrow to the arm or something, and he loses that arm. So, no more two-weapon fighting, no more using a bow. That's pretty tough luck. But, we'll make a separate video around how to deal with permanent injury, both as a player character as well as a game master, and how to adapt character concepts according to what happens in your campaigns. And that will be a separate video. Okay, um, damage done two players. Not that much of a problem. The players can deal with it. The damage done by players, on the other hand, <coughs> might be a problem. Or is it? Well, really. But because I can totally understand, I'm a game master most of the time myself, if um, the players come up and uh, they attack you, a big bad evil guy, and he takes a massive amount of damage, well, that's... you might have to replan parts of your campaign, you've grown attached to that, and I see. Well, but mainly, first thing you need to keep in mind, it's probably okay if they one shot at your, um, your NSC, well, it was a good role by the player, and if you narrate it properly, it, uh, properly, it's a really cool thing for your player. And so it's probably okay to have your characters, your NSC, killed. Um, you need to adapt then, okay, but that's part of your job as a game master. So, but uh, maybe your um, non-playable character um, is um, really important to your campaign. And you set him up as that big tough guy. And so it might be... Uh, not that good for all involved if he died on the first round. So what can you do? Well, hoard your bennies as a game master. If you know a boss fight is coming up, you have not only the uh, bennies that your wild card bit, big bad evil guy has, you also have your game master's bennies, one per player character, that you can hoard for those occasions. So, um, if I'm, I know a boss, fight, a boss fight is coming up, I usually have like six bennies laid back. Because I've got my four player characters, maybe five or six even, and I have the wildcard bennies as well. So having a lot of bennies makes your non-playable characters really, really tough if you want them to. So maybe that's still not enough. What else can you do to make your NPCs tougher? Well, you can use some of the edges that are in the main rules, like Elon or Elan. I don't really know how it's pronounced in, in um, English. But anyway, what it does, it gives you plus two to anything you spend a penny on. That means soak rolls as well, and those important skill rolls you need to get right for to shape the encounter the right way. That's... A really cool edge if you really want to make an encounter count, give the main NPC the, this edge. It will do wonders for his survivability and his effectiveness. If you need more bennies, you can always give him the luck edge, which gives him one additional benny. It's more or less um, written down in the rules as um, if it was only addressed to player characters, but there's no reason not to use it on an NPC. The third thing is, even if your NPC takes just one wound because it was much damage and he didn't soak it all, um, that still gives him penalties, which means he's less effective in a fight. If you want to avoid that, give him the Nerves of Steel edge, which ignores the first point of wound penalties. 
So we now have need to keep in mind that if your NPC dies, it's probably okay anyway. You have lots of bennies to do whatever you want. And you can use edges to make the use of those bennies even more effective. If that is still not enough, I have uh, some custom edges for you that you might want to use. I use them in my campaigns. Um, and uh, just a quick reminder, if I use edges in my campaigns, they are never NPC only. So if you introduce those edges, if you go by my mentality, they can be taken by the player characters as well, which will help them become really tough. So if you don't want that, don't use those edges. But let's take a look at them. The first one is Iron Jaw. Uh, you need to have a wiggle of a, a six-sided dice or higher, and you get one additional penny per session. This penny can only be used to soak. You get plus two on soaking rolls with all all bennies, not just the one you additionally got. Um, is that feat uh, this edge overpowered? No, it isn't because it's just half of the Elon Elon whatever edge that is in the main rules, and it's one half of the luck edge and so well it's focused on combat but that doesn't necessarily mean it's overpowered. It's something I like to use in combat oriented settings. The second edge I would bring to your attention is unbreakable. You need iron jaw for that, you need a wigger of a titan and you need to be a veteran. That's really heavy stuff we're talking about here. Well it's called unbreakable for a reason. And what it does it it lets you spend a Benny to force an enemy to re-roll a damage roll against you. What that does is it takes those, those damage spikes off. If a player character or if any character rolls 40 damage, which could happen, you will not be able to soak that. But what, which you, what you can do if you have this edge is say, okay, those 40 damage you re-roll them and you will most likely end up with something more manageable. So if you're worried about those damage spikes, you might want to allow this edge. Another edge that works along the same lines is bullet time. Um, it needs dodge improved dodge level headed and veteran. So that's pretty steep uh, as far as prerequisites go as well. Uh, but it means that you can use a character to force an enemy to re-roll an attack roll against you. Uh, and it's more addressed to characters who would rather not be hit, like they have dodge and improve dodge. They are probably counted on uh, counting on not getting hit in the first place. Okay, so don't worry, it's okay if your characters get hit or get killed. Horde bennies, use them. Use the edges that are already in the books or use the edges. If you ask me, it isn't. You can handle it. Both as a player character as well as as a game master, you can handle it. You just need to take a look at what you've got on concerning uh, the material, the edges, the stuff you have. And you can't really make it work. And what I really like about this, uh, the Savage Worlds approach to things especially how they handle bennies, um, is that it gives you as a game master a really good handle on managing encounters. Because a benny, if you have like six bennies for your big bad evil guy, and your big bad evil guy just is pounding the player characters, and he might kill one or two, and then he might even kill the whole party, they have no chance of getting away. Nobody's forcing you to use those pennies. You can just leave them there. And that's something you always need to keep in mind. It makes the encounters much more manageable. And um, if I'm playing D&D, which I do a lot uh, lately, uh, then if uh, an enemy has 200 hit points and I hit him and I do 10 damage, that's pretty inconsequential. I, I mean, I knew before I started that round for my character that I was probably gonna hit him, 
Well, and then I'm gonna do damage and I'm gonna do like one dice eight plus 10 damage or whatever. And it, there's not much variance in it. It's not really exciting. And Savage Worlds is designed to be fast, fun and furious. And you lose much of the fury if you get rid of all those um, outliers, all those exploding dice. It's really fun to play it that way. Okay, um, that's the first session so far. If you have questions, problems that you have uh, in your games as a game master or as a player, ah, well, let's talk about them. I can maybe help you. I'm playing Savage Worlds for quite some time now and uh, we might find a solution. So if you have something, please comment or share it with me. Uh, I'd really like to, uh, to hear from you. Okay, so um, as always, if you like the video, hit like. If you want to stay up to date and uh, stay attached to uh, the channel, then hit subscribe. And if you know someone who might be interested in the content we're creating here, then tell him, share this video. Okay, um, until then, have fun.